Hi everyone, Scott Nicholson here for our next entry into the Patient Support Speaker Series from the Judy Nicholson Kidney Cancer Foundation. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have a special guest, it's a health educator, she's a health educator from the Mayo Clinic and she's here to talk to you today about your diet and things you should be eating, things you may not be, should, things you shouldn't be eating um, when you've been diagnosed with renal cell carcinoma or another type of cancer. Uh, her name is Casey Kohler, and we're very excited to have her with us today. Without any further ado, let me switch the camera around. Hi, Casey. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm glad to be here. So give us a little bit about your background. Okay. Um, I graduated from the University of Florida about a year ago. Um, I got a de my degree in nutritional science. Um, during coursework and classes, we spent a lot of time going over specific diseases and how nutrition plays an important role in recovery and um, how adequate nutrition is really important during um, treatment processes. And um, I also spent time in clinics, clinics shadowing physicians, um, specifically radiation oncology. Um, so I saw a part of the um, treatment process of cancer as well. Awesome. I, to start us off, what, is, what do you feel is the best approach regarding nutrition to lower the risk of kidney cancer? Well, there's two things that are vitally important to lower kidney cancer risk. Um, the first one doesn't necessarily have to do with nutrition, but it is to stop smoking if someone uses tobacco products. Um, that's detrimental to the health. Um, it doesn't help nutrition. It doesn't help your diet. It doesn't help health in general. Um, it, has numerous health consequence, consequences um, across many diseases and cancer-related um, illnesses. So to stop smoking, and then when it is nutrition-related, um, or nutrition-related is to maintain a healthy lifestyle um, and a healthy weight. And so weight is the biggest thing, um, and it's individualized depending on a person's age, a person's gender, a person's height, um, and their physical activity level. And so the biggest resource I could suggest is myplate.gov um, is an excellent resource that you can use to make sure you are reaching your caloric intake and you're not surpassing it. Um, you said that was myplate.gov. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that, re that is um, all nutrition standards. They are an excellent resource. It tells you that weight range you should meet. Um, they have a food tracker on there to make sure that you are hitting specific targets and nutrient goals. Um, and so I would say smoking, if you do that, quit. If you don't, don't start. Um, and maintaining a healthy weight are the two biggest um, ways to decrease risk factors. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and so what about dietary supplements? Do those lower cancer risk or? So when people think dietary supplements, they usually think vitamins. And as far as we know, there is no um, scientific evidence of dietary supplements, such as vitamins, lowering any um, risk of cancer. Mm. Um, your food source is far more important than any dietary supplement. So making sure you're eating the five food groups of meat, dairy, whole grains, fruits, and vegetables, um, and getting vitamins and nutrients from food rather than dietary supplements. Um, and if you ever start to take vitamins, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with those, but making sure, especially when you're undergoing treatment, to um, communicate that with your doctor. Hmm. Um, and what about, anti what are antioxidants? I mean, you hear a lot about, you know, Eat blueberries, they're antioxidants, but I, I don't know what an antioxidant actually is. Okay, so um, in, in a short way to condense this, um, our body has free radicals floating around, and free radicals, when they are in high concentrations, can damage DNA, which can cause cancer or develop cancer later on. And so what antioxidants do is they combat and neutralize these free radicals um, which then would stop the damage of DNA and stop the development of cancer. And so antioxidants, you can think of vitamin E, vitamin A, uh, neutralize these free radicals. And um, again, as kind of correlating back to the previous question, 
it is important to get these through the food source that you see um, like fruit juices that say like antioxidant booster um, as long as you flip it over and read the ingredient labels that it's you know coming from a fruit source like blueberries and a lot of the berries um, those are excellent resources food sources over dietary supplements and can you overdo it can you y yes um, and I would check with your you usually want to hit your daily value goal of 100% and okay. so that's where if you if you eat a lot of fruits and vegetables and then you supplement you can overdose on certain um, vitamins as well gotcha um, what about GMOs, gen genetically modified foods, uh, and or different organisms like that? Are, are they are they safe? Or are they cancer causing? I know that's a big debate mm -hmm. right now. So there are two sides to this argument. Um, genetically modified foods. What it means is it is scientifically engineered that a gene or DNA is altered to really increase crop yield, and so um, usually the genes and DNA are altered in which it um, increases resistance to disease so the crops don't die as frequent or um, to increase tolerance of herbicides and things like that. So um, it's, it's really to increase crop yield. Sometimes even recently they have started to genetically modify um, through the DNA selection um, to increase nutrient content in food. So um, there is no evidence that says genetically modified foods are not safe, although we have not had a long enough study to really determine. Um, the American Medical Association and the World Health Organization, also um, the scientists generally agree that there is no health consequence to eating genetically modified foods. Wow. Um, so they, they don't have to worry about them, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what about eating organic? I mean, does that help? And is okay. that better than GMOs or? Um, so eating organically is kind of the opposite of eating genetically modified food. So an organic based food is something that does not have any conventional farming techniques that uses herbicides or pesticides or genetically modified foods. Organic is um, just the basic farming practices. and. The answer to this is really quite unsure right now of whether it helps reduce risk or um, is better for your health. Right now, um, it, it's much more important to make sure you're eating fruits and vegetables and whole grains and meeting nutrition requirements rather than be concerned with what like farming techniques are used to get there. Interesting. What would you say is the best diet for those that are undergoing cancer therapy? Okay. Um, sometimes I would um, touch with your doctor and your oncologist about this, but sometimes it is required to increase your caloric intake and increase your protein intake, but this is very dependent on an individual, and so you would want to touch base with this on with your doctor. Um, it's eating, like, it's eating, once again, your five food categories, fruits, vegetables, dairy, meats, and whole grains. Um, and a big thing about when you're undergoing um, treatment is to make sure you stay hydrated. A lot of adults, whether they are undergoing treatment or not, are chronically dehydrated as is. They don't drink enough water. And so it's very important, especially when your body is going through a traumatic process, um, an abnormal process, to make sure that you stay hydrated. Um, a diet Mountain Dew that has water in it, does that count? <laughs> no, you want to stay away from all the sugars. Okay. Um, and a lot of the time, water becomes unappealing to, patient, like, to cancer patients as well. And so to spice up your water with like lemons or cucumbers or limes or something like that, that makes it more appealing. Um, and eating a balanced diet, staying away from sugars and eating lean meats rather than processed meats, um, eating high caloric foods that are also high nutrient foods. So Could that, you give a couple examples of, uh, of what that lean meat, what that would, in, as opposed to processed meat? So like chicken, ch chicken breast and um, like your red meats like steak, I would stay away from like ground, ground meat and things like that and especially deli meats. Okay. Um, 
you want to stay away from a lot of deli meats. There's um, foodborne illnesses that are associated with that that you also don't want to contract while you're going through treatment. Okay, interesting. Um, how does body weight affect risk and treatment? So, um, body weight is one of the greatest risk factors, as we previously talked about. Um, so to maintain a healthy weight throughout your life is very important, and that's through adequate, adequate nutrition and adequate diet. But when you're undergoing treatment, um, you want to consult with your doctor before you decide to lose any weight, because naturally cancer patients tend to lose weight while going through the treatment. And if they were to lose too much weight, then that could be detrimental to their health and to their treatment. So um, before you modify any, any weight um, or implement any plan to modify your weight, always consult with your doctor and um, clear it with them first. Hmm. Um, dietary supplements, are, are those useful during treatments? So this is where I would say to avoid dietary supplements. Um, and to back up a second, what, what exactly does, does it, what qualifies as a dietary supplement? So usually what you would think of as a vitamin, like calcium oh, okay. and um, like in the pill form of like vitamin A, vitamin C, your one a day vitamins, things mm -hmm. like that. That's a dietary supplement. Anything that you can consume through a food source that they have in a pill or powder form as gotcha. well. Gotcha. Because your body mostly passes those vitamins from what i understand if you were to take vitamins mm -hmm. then most of that is not absorbed by the body mm -hmm. it passes right yes, through you that's true so you if you're if you're eating those the the fruits and the vegetables that those vitamins come from your body's going to be able to absorb yes. that yeah. more okay mm -hmm. cool uh what foods should be avoided or eliminated while uh, like can i still eat cheetos um, you can, and just because there is such decreased appetite during treatment, sometimes you might need to eat some Cheetos just to reach caloric intake. Um, but the foods you most likely want to avoid are anything raw or undercooked because of those foodborne illnesses. Since your immune system is going to be suppressed um, from the treatment you're undergoing and the di like the diagnosis that you have, um, you want to avoid raw fish. Um, undercooked eggs, undercooked meat, um, again the deli, deli meat, the deli salads like egg salad, turkey salad, chicken salad, things like that, um, just because those are more likely to um, induce a foodborne illness that you want to avoid while you're undergoing treatment. I see. Um, what obstacles regarding diet will a patient face while undergoing treatment? So the biggest two are um, anorexia. So appetite is usually very like decreased throughout treatment. There's just no desire to eat. Um, and so to combat that, it's better to eat smaller meals throughout the day. To have five or six smaller meals rather than three meals that we usually eat, the larger meals. Um, to make that those smaller meals to eat regardless of whether you're feeling hungry or not and to make the meals feel appet or to look appetizing as well to make your meals look like something you would want to eat um, so you actually eat them um, and then nausea is another thing that people usually battle with um, nausea and vomiting and so on, on that spectrum, you want to stick to blander foods, and you usually think of the brat diet. So your bananas, rice, apples, toast, um, quinoa, things that are just going to give you the calorie intake at that point. It's more about you know getting food into your system um, and eating, rather even though you don't feel like it. You need your body needs the energy and the substance. Hmm. Are there um, any lifestyle changes that you would recommend people make when they're diagnosed with cancer or when they're undergoing cancer treatment? So it's really, um, again, that my plate, it's an individual, each diet is individual to the person. Um, what I'm 
six foot male needs to eat is going to be much different than a five foot elderly woman. Um, the calorie intakes, the protein intakes, but you usually want um, whole grains, you want vegetables, you want fruits, you want dairy to get your calcium, and you want a protein. Um, it's making sure you're eating those foods and sticking away from the junk foods and the sugars and the Mountain Dews um, and the Cheetos and eating more um, produce and vegetables and things like that. Um, and getting active. Getting active for at least 30 minutes a day. It is a balance of everything. Your diet is critically important, but getting outside, getting um, active, making your heart rate go up, things like that, um, those are healthy and important lifestyle changes that need to be made as well. Hmm. Who can a patient consult about getting proper nutrition? Um, so you can consult with your doctor on recommendations for a registered dietitian. They can really help you. Um, they would probably ask you to write down a food journal or a food blog of what you've eaten for the past either 24, 48, or even a week. Um, so they can see like how you're doing, what goals you're meeting. Um, and they can really help with side effects that someone is going through, um, tailored to a person as well. So a registered dietitian that your oncologist recommends would be a great resource to utilize. Awesome. Is there, um, is there, is there any foods that, um, like, of course, they should stay away from fast foods. They should, should they be cooking their own meals or? It's, what is... Generally, it's proven that when you cook your own meals at home rather than going out and ordering something, you're more likely to eat healthier. That's mm -hmm. scientifically proven that when you mm -hmm. eat at home, you eat better. And so I would recommend um, definitely going to the grocery store and even meal prepping. That's a big thing nowadays is one day meal prep for the next few days so when you don't feel great on those certain days that you already have a meal you already have a meal in the freezer that you've cooked um, so definitely at home meals are much more nutritious than things you would be able to find prepared elsewhere and when they're preparing their food at home uh, is there any is there any reason why they shouldn't be using a microwave or does it matter or does, no okay no There's, um, the best way to, it's not the most appetizing, but the most um, efficient and nutritious way to cook is to boil things. Um, boil chicken and things like that, but it is not sufficient enough that you can't cook other methods as well. Okay. Well, thank you so much. If we've received any other questions, would it be all right if we reached out to you for answers? Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Wonderful. Let me turn this camera around and I'll sign us off. Hey everybody, uh, we hope you enjoyed today's Facebook Live video. We, we're happy to answer any additional questions that you have. Just leave them in the comments below. Uh, thank you so much for your time. We have another video coming up tomorrow with a pharmacist, and uh, she's going to be answering all your questions regarding different um, prescriptions and treatments for kidney cancer. So we look forward to seeing you then, and thank you so much, and thank you again, Casey. And you all have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.